Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is the ninth lesson on flight instruments. The last one where we discuss the gyro instruments, we'll be talking about the turn coordinator as well as the what's called the turn and bank indicator. Okay, let's talk about some principles of operation. The uh, top instrument is what's called the turn and bank indicator, and it measures the rate of turn, so the number of degrees we're turning per second. It relies on the principle of gyroscopic precession. If we look to the right, how it looks like on the inside, we see a gyroscope mounted with the uh, axes parallel to the lateral axes of the aircraft. As the aircraft turns, the gyroscope uh, processes and moves the needle either to the left or to the right. We also have a ball. Both of these instruments have a ball and the bottom that indicate whether the turn is a slip or a skid. So if it's uncoordinated, if we, let's say, have too much rudder, and uh, if we were to think about it, a slip would be, let's say, we're on a bicycle. And if we were to do a slipping turn on a bicycle, the bicycle would fall to the inside of the turn. Likewise, if we were to do a skid on a bicycle, we would fall to the outside of the turn. So obviously on a bicycle, we pretty much always are coordinated, otherwise we would uh, fall over. But an airplane can be uncoordinated. Secondly, the turn coordinator is a bit more of a modern iteration of the instrument. It measures both the rate of roll and rate of turn and displays that information as a little airplane on the turn coordinator. It can be used as a substitute if the attitude indicator fails. You can see the turn coordinator on the right, how it works. The gyroscope is, is oriented slightly different and the location of the gimbal is slightly different. So it will uh, indicate both uh, a rate of turn and roll. And I believe technically the, um, that gyro is off 35 degrees if my memory serves me correctly. And that's why you get a measurement of both rate of roll and rate of turn. This is just an example of what uh, slipping turns are and skidding turns. This is from Bold Method. Uh, you can check out their YouTube channel and their website. They have a lot of great uh, information. So if on a slipping turn, for example, we don't have enough rudder, the ball falls towards the inside of the turn. Conversely, a skidding turn, we have uh, too much rudder and it causes the ball to go to the outside of the turn. There are no errors associated with the turn coordinator. The only limitation to the turn coordinator is that it displays no pitch information. So if you have to rely on it because your attitude indicator failed, that's fine. It will tell you if your wings are level, but it will not tell you if your nose high or nose low. You'll have to look at other instruments for that. The turn coordinator is uh, powered by either an electrical system or a vacuum system. On uh, the vacuum sister can be driven by either Venturi's on really old aircraft or a vacuum pump, as you see on the uh, bottom right. Let's review quickly. A turn and bank indicator measures rate of turn and a turn coordinator measures rate of turn and rate of roll. The ball indicates if the turn is coordinated and the marking indicates a two minute turn, meaning that you are turning 360 degrees in two minutes. Now we have a sample test question. What is the difference between a turn coordinator and a turn and bank indicator? A, a turn and bank indicator provides rate of turn information, while a turn coordinator also provides rate of roll information. So that's correct. Let's keep going. B, turn coordinator provides rate of turn, while a turn and bank indicator also provides rate of roll. So that's backwards. Nope, that's not correct. C, a rate of a turn and bank indicator provides rate of roll information, so that's not correct. D, a turn coordinator provides limited pitch information. That is not correct. A, a turn coordinator does not provide any pitch information. So correct answer, A.